Type 1, the perfectionist, and today we're going to talk about how you can use the wings and arrows on the Enneagram to work with your anger. Now the tricky part for you is, particularly if you're a 1 and you're new to the Enneagram, you don't always know when you're angry. So you can first start by looking at clues that you're angry. Start noticing your posture. Start noticing um, your smiling. One one told me, I just became aware. People told me you don't smile very much. Now, not all ones, you know, have a hard time smiling. This is a this is how his anger showed itself. Another one says, I start grinding my teeth. My jaw gets really tight. Uh, I start, you know, noticing my neck is really stiff or my lower back is stiff. Or I might, you know, my colitis might start acting up again. Start noticing things like that. There's cues that you're anger, angry, using shoulds. People should do this. People should behave like this. That's a clue. So what could you do in, you know, in terms of activating that seven-ish part of yourself? Well, one of the very first things to do is curiosity. Sevens tend to be naturally curious, and it might be helpful for you to get curious about what else is bothering me here. Sevens eat, or it's interesting, you're, even as a one, you're a gut type, you know, a body type, but a lot of ones mistake themselves at the beginning for head types because you get very analytical, you get very in your thoughts, and you can get into an obsessive thinking pattern about, you know, one right way thinking, people should do it this way, and a lot of times, you know, People are, you know, if you if you talk about um, what does follow through mean, for instance, what specifically is follow through to you? It might be very different to someone else. For you, a follow through might be that you turn your report in when I asked for the report and all five things are done. And for somebody else, you know, follow through can mean, you know, I reached out to her to see how she was doing because it seemed like something was bothering her. That's more of a heart kind of thing. And so for you who gets really focused on the details, that can be challenging. And sevens tend to be naturally curious. Um, they explore different possibilities. They think about, you know, what's another way this work could be organized? What's another way we could elicit ideas from other people? Um, you know, on the surface, sometimes sevens can look impractical, but sometimes that's where creativity is found in those impractical ideas. So if you find yourself kind of wanting to plug into creativity, that's a great clue for you that I want something more curious, open, spontaneous, because you can get so tight. And what's interesting with most ones I know, they have that hardwired into their system. You have an arrow there. It's something that's almost strongly inside of you, this desire to be curious, open, have fun. But for you, you get so caught up in the shoulds of how things should be um, that you can miss that aspect of yourself. So it's going to be something you'll probably just always have to work on. And so just be gentle with yourself about it. The other thing is how could work be fun? Um, how could um, we could allow ourselves to take some time for enjoyment? Sometimes ones can procrastinate for so long on, on you know, pulling the trigger on a idea, on a, a project, on a vacation, um, on a place to go for dinner, because you want to find that right thing to do, and you can get very locked in on that. So. You know, make a promise to yourself, I'm going to do one thing spontaneous every day this week and notice what happens. Notice how you feel in your body. And um, yeah, just pay attention to your senses. So let's now go to four. And fours are really focused on feelings. So, you know, with you, uh, sometimes I, I, I'll ask ones how they're feeling and they'll tell me what they're thinking. Okay, so pay attention to the difference between feeling language and thinking language because that'll help that'll enable you to develop deeper connections with people and fours are really good at they want that deep kind of soulful connection so pay attention when you listen to someone not just on what they said and how they should have said it but what might they be feeling right now how am I feeling in their presence and look for feeling words you can google feeling words google emotions I love nonviolent communication um, look that up on Google they do a great job of listing feelings and start asking yourself once a day what am I feeling because as you get more in touch with your feelings you'll get more in touch with the nuanced ways 
other people feel. And try to pay attention to if you start saying that there's this one right way they should feel. Well, they just lost someone, so they should be grieving. There's five stages of grief, and you know they might be feeling this, and they might be feeling this. Notice that, because I can find sometimes ones get, get rigid about how we should talk about feelings, all right? So have some humor and playfulness around that as well. Um, it's about spontaneity. It's about, um, you know, activating creativity. Think of, you know, the notion of expansion, you know, arms held wide. Ones can get very contracted into this one right way and start to notice what that's like. Just even do it right now. What is it like to just put your arms out, look at the sky? You know, it can seem very irresponsible. <laughs> so pay attention to that as well. Um, and make a kind of spontaneous self self um, uh, uh, c c expression, a priority. Put that on the front end of the bur burner. And as you do this, you'll start naturally developing more fluidity. Um, start developing notions of deeper meaning because you have that in you. You've probably already noticed that, that you have that in you. You have that depth. And so if you can't, you know, do it within yourself, find somebody who brings that playful side out in you and call them for lunch and, uh, you know, go out to dinner and allow yourself to play, allow yourself to relax and maybe do something, you know, at work. If you're at work, bring food and maybe make it a decadent food. I know one one and she's a fabulous cook and she's the one bringing the chocolate ganache to a party. All right. So, um, and I would say that the final, final thing, and I see this across the board, particularly when people start working on the Enneagram, it's so important for you to have self-compassion. So if you're a one, please, you know, in the comments below, let us know what works for you. How do you integrate that seven and four aspect of yourself to work with your anger and to work with your capacity for letting go? And if you do make a comment about a one, Make sure there's real, make you remember that there's real live people reading these posts below. And so you want to pay attention to that. This isn't the time to bash your sister who's a one or the boss that you didn't like. Okay, because we really, self-compassion is so important. So feel free, click subscribe. And I want to be able to, the, you know, the more subscriptions we have, the more we can get this information out to people who really, really care about growing themselves in some way. And also, www.lesliehirschberger.com. I'd love for you to sign up for the newsletter and you'll be hearing from me. It's not, you're not going to hear from me constantly. I don't flood your inbox. So, all right. Again, feel free to put suggestions below.